Yes. We'll keep that part out of it. Hey, we're here. Ryan Divish, Seattle Times, cover baseball. It's all brought to you by Chalet Bowl, chaletbowl.com. Big thanks uh, to Reggie and the crew there at uh, Chalet Bowl. Hold on. I got to give, you know what I'm not prepared for is my uh, my fancy read for you. All okay. right. You okay, that. established. I know, established 1941, located in Tacoma's Proctor District, family owned and operated for 40 years. The Frederick family and staff specializes in customer service for your bowling, food, and fun experience. While at our unique 12 lane facility, go to chaletbowl.com to make your next reservations. How do you like, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, obviously if you're listening to it, you can't see it. But how about that Tacoma Rainiers hat that I'm sporting, that beautiful red hat? It's, you got uh, it's, it's a quality hat. I tell people all the time, I retweet it. Um, there's stuff a lot, but. They have the best hats in minor league baseball. The R is the cleanest looking hat. I've ever, I have probably, I bet you I have 15 different Rainier's hats. Um, anytime I go anywhere, people like compliment, you know, cause I have every like kind of colorway they have. Um, uh -huh. And then the guy that actually uh, runs it, a guy named Kyle, he's their the store manager. He's great. Like he works with us. He's like, what colors do you think we should get? You know, stuff like that. He worked with our friend Akita to get some colorways in. And so, yeah, it's, I go there quite often. Uh, I have a small collection on like all my buddies back home have the hats too. Like my one buddy who's a fly fishing guide, he has the Sam, the salmon fishing one, uh -huh. the baseball bat. He loves that one. So yeah, if you, uh, shameless plug, but if you get a chance, you should go to the oh, Rangers team store. Cause I mean, like go, go say it, go to, go to the team store, go, Break in, go knock on Curdo's door. He'll shoot us Mike Curdo when he calls games. You know, for tell people who some people that don't know the story, he calls the games with his shoes off. Yeah, he doesn't. He takes his shoes off. He wants to be comfortable, so he has a heater because it's so freaking cold there sometimes. Know, he has a space he thinks heater he's... by his feet, but he has no shoes on. So it's so shoe weird. Mike Curdo. It's just. Uh, by the way, and God, I wish I. There's part of the. Frustration of living up in Seattle. It's so far from Tacoma. It's so far from that stadium. But that is the, it's just the most fun. We went there twice last year. It was, it's just such a blast. The, the best part about it is the kit, is the, the, the wiffle ball field. Oh, yeah. yeah it's you, just, they don't even want to watch the awesome. game. They just want to sit on the wiffle ball field and hit bombs. And like, it's way <sighs> cheaper. It's better. Like, you know, it's, it's a good deal for kids. Like, if you want to get close in it, the, the, Mar the Rainiers actually have prospects this year or some, so that makes a difference. Uh, I was kind of like, oh, it's funny. I do every once in a while, like there'll be a Thursday night where where the Mariners are not playing or a Monday night and the Rainiers are in town. I'll, I'll get some Summit Club tickets where they have all the beer you can drink and I'll go there and watch a game. Yeah, I'm not there to work. I'm just there to drink beer and it's great. It's it's the best. I re you know what? You mentioned that it's, it's the cleanest hat in the minor leagues. I I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's the cleanest hat and logo in baseball. Yeah, I, I think for everything, I yeah. just it's phenomenal. Like the one that I love that I want to go get is the, is the it's the purple and green the Tacoma Rainiers yeah. like uh, cursive mm -hmm. with the mountain in the back. That's yeah. the one I want. I have the uh, the the original mountain one, the navy blue, and I have a black and white mountain. Got I've got a Sonics colored uh, R hat as well that I I really get to wear, but I have a Sonics colored one, and then I got even just like. They had a navy one. It was just navy with the uh, the R, just clean. Like it just stands out. It's like when the Braves went to the old navy hat, the full navy hat with just the white A cursive. That was that's yeah. a sweet looking hat. You know what I would do if I were in charge of all things uh, local sports? This is what I would do, and I don't think you'd get much pushback on this one. Can we? I would petition the Mariners just rebrand themselves as the Rainiers. <laughs> yeah, but then the, the Rainiers. Seattle Rainiers. No, we like to keep stuff in Tacoma our own well, you know it's like can they be to come can you have them both be the rain why can't they no, both be the rain ears no 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 we'll keep it in tacoma it works better that way and can we get rid of the moose uh, <laughs> just get can we please get my idea of having an old <laughs> drunk oh, yeah, salty, salty gus, gus yeah. just a it just a, he's he's dressed in a yellow rain jacket slicker with pr boots on maybe something on underneath maybe not but he's perpetually drunk, and he's smoking a cigarette. Or a, a yeah. cigarette. Can't you just go pull one of those guys from the Ballard Locks every once in a while, or the okay. Lock and Keel? Yes, there. Uh, there is a. Uh, there's a bar 
that um, there, there's a bar. You're kind of blanking on the name of it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> there is a my buddy goes to a bar that um, there's a guy that goes there that looks just like the um, mascot. You that want. just looks just like a salty guest. My God, the what is the name of the bar? Give me a second. I the the caboose. The God, I'm blanking on the stupid name right now, and it's driving me nuts. Um, the but he looks just like it, and they're like, "Oh my God, you got to go wa- come in there and watch this guy, and you'll see." And I went in there one time, and like, "Uh, yeah, this is a hundred percent salty Gus." So that <laughs> that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see salty Gus become the new mascot there of the Seattle Mariners. How can we not make that happen? And why can I not remember the name of the stupid bar? Good I lord. Mean- might scare kids a little bit though, you know. Like, well, the, hey, the, the hey, moose kids, scares. Me... The, first of all, the moose the moose scares kids. Okay, Big salty Gus. Hey, hey, kids, let me tell you about Marlboros versus Marlboro Lights. Don't you yeah. think they need to learn some of the? Don't you think they need to learn some of these? Um, yeah, these messages. Don't they, yeah. they? They need to get it. Don't they think they understand what's going on? The box car. My God, yeah. I can't believe I was blanking on the box car. So there, the, you got if you ever in Magnolia, go to the box car, and there is a guy in there. I can't say I go to Magnolia like, a whole lot. I mean, it's on the bottom of Magnolia, so you don't got to go all the way up over the hill. It's like the bottom I'm, of it. You turn off, and it's it's not like you're not fully investing your half an hour to an hour drive to get into Magnolia. You know, I've I've lived in like the Puget Sound area for since 2006. The amount of stuff and the places I've never been, like I I went to Snoqualmie Falls for the first time last year. <laughs> I'd never been there before. <laughs> like, why? What, 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 what? You know, I went hiking once on Mount wow. Si. Called her good. Like, that's good. You know, what is it? Rattlesnake <laughs> it Ridge? Or, yeah. I, yeah. I'd well, say, I'm Rattlesnake good. Ridge is yeah. terrible. I mean, I'm it's good, nice, right? but it's terrible. I'm good. I, I did it once. Called her good. It's like the okay. rainforest, stuff like that. You know, I don't really. Have you ever been to Magnolia? I think once. Okay. Maybe right. twice. I don't know. I don't even know technically where Magnolia starts or whatever. Like I go when I go to Seattle, I go to Ballard. I go to Mike's Chili. Yeah. I go to yeah. Tractor Tavern. Um, mm-hmm. And I go play fast pitch at Lower Woodland. That's about it. I mean, because I don't even so consider tell- T-Mobile where you know Seattle really. That's soda. Right. It's barely. Yeah, that's soda. That doesn't count. So tell people why why do you go to Mike's Chili Parlor? Because they sponsor my fast pitch team. That's so, the best. I, yeah, I love the fact that he, he, sp- he sponsors your fast pitch team. Yeah. Good Lord. How he often do our, you guys came play? came to one of our games last year. Sat there do you guys have parties them. there? Do you guys have like the end of the season? Yeah, we have the end of the season, but I'm usually back in Montana when that happens. So, Oh, you got to go. Well, next time you're in town, you have free day. We'll take you there. Yeah, the one day I Introduce you to though. Angel. She'll, she'll rip oh, you no, a new one. She's a great... First shout out of Angel here on Puck Sports Podcast. Here's this chili's kind of spicy. Drink some more Rainier, you'll be fine. Oh God, she is. I love her to death. I remember when I first would go in there, and she would scare the life out of me. She'll yeah. get a kick out of hearing this story. I'm just like, Good Lord, man. And then once you get to know her, she's great. But now I watch it when other people will cut when I'm there, and other people will come in that that aren't regulars or whatever. And just the attitude she gives them. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, maybe get some chili and beer. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. I'll get you. <laughs> Does this come with anything? Yeah, it comes with a beer. Oh God, it's it's the best. Or you're like, well, so because they have their chili, it's a bunch of different ways, and yeah, I'm like, oh, well, so what what, what uh, chili? What do you want on it? Well, I don't know what comes on it. It's on the board, just yeah, right there. <laughs> and I said I didn't want onions on mine. She just looked at me oh. like I was the worst human being on the planet. It's the best chili. I oh, mean, man. I'm not paid to say that. It's awesome chili. It's so I good. I love. I could use it right the- now. It's so freaking cold here. Okay, so how so we got the the M's and Rockies will start a three game series, and here's the deal: having having been to Denver many many times, my wife is from there. You've got family there as well. The weather is so odd, especially this time of year. Oh. It can be seventy five, it can be twenty five. It's the and it can be twenty five in the morning, and then it's snowing, and then it can be seventy five at four o'clock. It's it's the weirdest weather pattern in the history of weather patterns there. You, you so what, the, what's the temperature like, now? It's 30, 30 <laughs> with the wind blowing with the, it feels like 30, it's 33. So like Denver weather, cause Montana, they always say is like, if you don't like the weather, wait two minutes, but Denver weather, it's Nothing like, like the craziest girlfriend you've ever had. The one that would have multiple personalities. That's what this is. It's what was her name? Schizo- yeah. Several of them. Uh, it's <laughs> schizophrenic is what it is. And so like, 
like last night too, I was, I got downtown finally and uh, met a buddy, um, had dinner and then I went downtown, checked in. I was kind of bored. I was on a, wanted to get a drink. And so Daniel Kramer from MLB told me to go to the Williams Tavern. So I look on Yelp and it says 0.3 miles, but then I realized it's in Uptown. So then I walked like a mile basically to get there. And then I got there and it's this little tavern. It looks cool. It's a dive bar S, but it's packed. And it's, they're playing music so loud. And, and then everybody in there is like 25 and wearing Patagonia coats. And like, so, was, so right. So your people, uh, I just got out. I just turned, <laughs> I turned, I was going to just message Kramer, like a nasty message, but instead I'm like, well, doesn't you know, he kind of fit that mold Kramer? That's kind of oh, yeah, him, isn't the, it? He looks like he loves Eddie Bauer and Patagonia puffy coats. Yeah. So no, yeah. but yeah, so I, I walked around downtown. I mean, it's they've they've torn up 16th Street Mall. It's like all mm. the streets are all torn up because they're trying to fix it. I mean, like after the pandemic and that that area got a little rough. I'm staying at the Magnolia, but is it still all walk up? Look, I got a spare place and yeah. I'm where are lady. you at? Where are you? Are this? I thought this you were staying at your family. That's the hotel you're staying yeah, at. Yeah, it's Magnolia. For those hotel. listening and not watching, go back and watch on YouTube. I thought you were at your. Do your sister still live there? Yeah, she still lives in Parker, so that's she's. In, yeah, so I thought that's where you were at in this hotel, but yeah. But this year in a hotel, look at that! It's beautiful. All yeah, right, it's continue. A, I got upgraded. You know, when you have that much Marriott. When you spent over yeah. two thousand nights in a Marriott in your life, you get upgraded. You are a me. big deal. You are yeah. a big deal. So no, it's uh, weather's crazy. They're not going to take BP. It's supposed to start raining about three o'clock. It was uh. pure sleet yesterday, Puck. Like it was sleeting, snowing. You know, I went and I. I uh, went and picked, took my niece to school. She had a late start or whatever yesterday. I stayed with my mm -hmm. sister yesterday. And then I was just like, this is ridiculous. And I went, kind of walked around that whole Parker area, you know, in the Richville, looking at all the all the uh, unmarried women driving, like, you know, G-Wagons and BMW <laughs> SUVs. It's something all. else. Not, all these married women, yeah, they're one of them have jobs, you know, so it's like. they It's something else, man. Yeah. That's like little Beverly Hills, man. Oh, it's crazy. So, uh yeah, it's just bad. And tomorrow, the high is supposed to be like 34 tomorrow. And then set Sunday, 68 to 70. I, I tell this story all the time about one of my first Denver experiences. The, the, this was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself. I, uh, whatever, the, the second year in a row they were going to the NCAA tournament, uh, Tony Bennett and that crew. So we, we fly out. The, the first round is in Denver. So I'm like, well, let's go visit your parents to my wife, and then we'll go. I'm going to go watch the Cougs play at the Pepsi Center. So, I and her father's a big basketball fan. So, so we'll, we'll get us tickets. We'll go to the whole day. All right. So, we're going to spend, you know, six, seven hours there. We get to the Pepsi Center. I want to say at like 10 o'clock. It's already like 70 degrees at 10 o'clock. I'm in shorts and flip flops and a t shirt. I'm like, it's going to be nice all day long. This is wonderful. We go inside. We're there all day long. I think we leave about, four or five i haven't been outside since seven or since like nine o'clock i walk outside it's it's snowing and it's 32 yeah <laughs> i'm in flip-flops and a t-shirt and shorts and i'm like but that's what it's like there it's the it's just unreal and there's yeah. always that like in the spring and summer that what is it that three o'clock or three thirty like thunderstorm shower that lasts yeah. for like five minutes and then it's over but and it's big it's a great spot and lightning too yeah, it's a good spot. It's, well, they got a bad baseball team that they're going to face for the next three days, and they've been bad forever, it feels like. Uh, an opportunity for these guys to kind of get fat and happy, uh, and especially their their superstar, Julio Rodriguez. Great breakdown today. I mean, it was there was a point when I was reading it, I'm going to be honest with you, that I was the Zach Galifianakis, you know, with all the yeah. numbers were spinning in my head of all the stuff that you were writing. Yeah. But – it was really, you did a great job, like in depth, looking at why he's struggling and, and how maybe he can rectify it. But I guess I'll ask you what, how, how does he try to turn around what other teams are, are trying to do against him? Yeah. I mean, like yeah, I was the same way with those numbers. At one point, I think I went cross-eyed and then I like, I looked and I had, you know, I'm using the savant search tool and, and I had the wrong parameters set in. So I had to go back and adjust and. I'm sure I, I pissed off all my editors because it took me so long to finish that. Um, because I like I had one idea what I was gonna write, and then and like I thought, you know, just because he had a couple hits, and the thing was is the hits that he got and the doubles he got. One came on a breaking ball from Andrew Abbott that was in the strike zone that he just hammered. 
you know, and on a, a warm day, that's out of T-Mobile Park probably or off the wall. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the other one was a fastball that he kind of stayed inside. It was middle in and he hit it opposite field for a double. And I'm like, those are the two swings he has to have. You know, I was watching the replay. So I, I went back and I had talked to a couple scouts. There was a guy from the Dodgers that I'm friends with. And they all just kind of said, like a lot of people have said, it's like, when is he going to figure it out? He's getting the treatment that all these other guys got in. Hard as you can throw it in on their hands, get them uncomfortable, then soft away, soft away. So I went, checked out the numbers and they checked out for the most part. And I mean, I watch all the at-bats and you, you guys see it. I mean, you watch his at-bats and usually his at-bats are appointment viewing. You just kind of see like, they love to ride the fastball up and in right underneath his hands because he can't get underneath of it. But at the same time, an elevated fastball is like, you know, a free bottle of whiskey for me and you. So good for you, but or so good, but so bad for you at times. You know, same with like oh, especially chocolate Especially late, especially yes. late. It's like chocolate God. cake, you know, the high fastball. Just and so it looks so good, so bad for you. And so like oh. he, you know, they do that and then they kind of just, flip breaking balls away and they did it with Vlad. They did it with trout. They did it with all these guys. And what those guys learned is eventually, you know, you just can't give in. You have to be disciplined to that. And he goes through stretches of that. But I think part of it is, is like his, and we've talked about this before, his heightened sense of responsibility and what he wants or what he believes he needs to do for this team. It's, it's beyond any other player I've ever seen because it's every day. You know, mm-hmm. Kyle Seager was like that in a lot of ways, Nelson Cruz, but they didn't, you know, Kyle maybe more so than Nelly, they didn't have that kind of ownership because, you know, he has signed the long-term deal. He was drafted or he was signed, developed. He has um, just a tie to this organization that somebody from the outside doesn't. And so he feels the responsibility when things aren't going right, that he needs to do it. And he wants to be good. Like he has... He has goals of the Hall of Fame and all this other stuff, I think, in his mind. You know, he doesn't always admit it, but he wants to perform. He's, a, he's an entertainer. He loves to perform. It's why he loves NBA guys. It's why he loves Durant. It's why he loves LeBron. They perform, you know, entertain. You know, the, this, the, the no flies. Yeah, and all he stuff. gets it. It's all, part, yeah. it's all part of his interaction with... With everybody in center field. No one has more fun during a game yeah, than him. If somebody does somewhat find it. I mean, it's why, isn't he taping something with LeBron? Isn't he yeah, doing LeBron's podcast thing or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, so he understands living, it all. He's living a dream and he's having fun doing it. But part of that dream isn't struggling and striking out a bunch. So I, I think all those things factor into it. And he just gets so worked up sometimes in these at bats wanting to do something. And, Teams take advantage of it, so and I, I think, think what you get better. And I think what you touched on though is like this is something like like Seager or Cruz has gone through. But the difference is they're not; they've never been pegged to superstar like this guy. Nope, they never had to carry that. No, this is like this he carries a different mantle. This is Griffey. This is a Rod, probably more Griffey than a Rod because it was, you know, a Rod is when he came into that it had left. But this is Griffey. He's yeah, carrying the entire organization on his shoulders. And it's, and it's like, if you want to use current comparisons, it's Trout, it's Vlad Guerrero Jr., it's yeah. Acuna. These are the guys that, and, and really, if you, we've seen it, when he's good, when he's good, they're good. When he's great, they're one of the better teams in baseball because of the pitching plus him. So I, I think, yeah, I, I, I tried to get into a lot, and I wanted to, I actually did some of the numbers from the year before in the first, 20 games of the season or whatever. And they were very similar in terms of the approach and how they were attacking him. He had hit some home runs early and then went on a cool streak where people tried to use this philosophy against him. So, uh, but, but he know, knows know that, that divish, right? I mean, huh? he, 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 they, he knows it okay. and they, they see all the stats, right. That yeah. you've come up yeah. with. They, they see all the video. Right. They're more prepared than they've ever been. So, I mean, is it just getting out of his own head? I mean, he knows what they're trying to do. The game plan. How do you? Yeah, I, how does he take what he knows and apply it on the field? I think a little bit of it too is just pitchers have executed a little bit too, and that's what I tried to write at the very end. Is you can have the best game plan in the world, and you can go in there and you can look. You know, I know what this is, and I know what they're going to try and do. But if they're able to do it and get ahead of you, then what the hell do you do? Then you're on the defensive. It's like the, you know, like I think I said before, but it's the whole Mike Tyson thing. Everybody has a plan to get punched yeah. in the face. 
Like yeah. you go in there and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to work this count. I'm going to get ahead. I'm going to earn my fastball. The guy executes two really good sliders that you don't swing at, or maybe you foul off one. That's a mistake. Then you're Oh two. Then you're on the defensive. Then the plan that you had is out the door. So I, I think he understands, but you know, it's, it's, it's controlling your emotions. It's, it's understanding all that. And like for some guys, he is very stubborn. And at some point, you know, the, the failures of what you're doing will force you into making a change. And I think sometimes with Julio, his belief in who he is, his talent, what he's done, the work he's put in, because he, he puts in a ton of work, he always believes that's going to fix it. But sometimes mm -hmm. you have to change some things up in your mentality. And, and when you're a, a star like him and you're kind of stubborn, it may take failure to force you to do it versus what? Jarrett to hard or Scott service or anybody says, or even one of his teammates. Do, do you think he's better? Sir? I, mean, I know why he hit lead off the other day because JP got the day off, but is he, is there a pressure that he's, he gets relieved of if he hits lead off? And I, and I just say that because, you know, early in the game, obviously he's going to come up there. There's going to be nobody on base. So now his, does his, his mentality or mindset shift at all knowing that does he feel more comfortable to you when he hits lead off? Does he, is there a position in the lineup that he feels most comfortable with? I mean, we've talked about it before that when we were growing up, he would clearly be your, your three hole hitter, but you know, the game has changed a little bit how they evaluate that. Uh, is there um, a comfort zone in the lineup for him? I don't think so. Cause I don't know that your approach changes that much. You're not up there leading off now, taking 10 million pitches, doing the Ricky Henderson thing. That, that's not what they do. He has the same approach. Look at George Springer for all those years. I think with Julio, he just understands he wants as many at bats in a game as possible and batting one or two guarantees you that even more so than three. So I think he probably prefers two or three, but he can do it. He, he's fine with whatever. Just doesn't yeah. want to bat ninth. <laughs> they should, they should do like little league one day, you know, where everybody got to move everybody around, you know, yeah. early in the season, the little league, you put your best, you know, cause you don't want the, the, Players that struggle the most always be hitting last, so you move them up every now and again. Yeah. So they get a little taste of it. They should do that with Julio. Julio bats ninth today. <laughs> see I, see I mean, how that would go over. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, and you touched on it, his defense has been great. He's yeah. changed the game that way. His base running has been solid. And, and really the hitting isn't, it hasn't been outstanding, but it hasn't been god-awful either. You know, the, the, the numbers don't look pretty, but there are a lot of people with bad numbers right now. And it, it takes, you know, he has two or three, three hit games in a week. The numbers change yeah. very rapidly. He, do, he very does bad. what he does, what some players really struggle uh, against that. He doesn't whatever he's doing offensively. He has not allowed that at all to affect his defense. Not one bit or or affect his joy. Uh, for the game. I mean, again, I, I say, I've said this so many times. There is no one that I, when I watch, especially, and you get more of a feel of it when you're there, that enjoys playing the game of baseball more than this guy. No one. It just there, there is no one that, I mean, no one interacts with a group of people more than this guy. He is constantly, and TV probably doesn't do it justice. He's constantly talking to those people in that Julio section, telling them how many outs there are, what's coming up. I mean, it's it's incredible. It goes back to your point about, I think he, what makes him special is he understands that, you know, there's more to just playing baseball. This is what I always thought, and maybe it's their personalities, and I get it. It's always the one thing that I wish Mike Trout in his career would have embraced more, is that there's a lot more than just being a baseball player. There's, a, there's an entertainment aspect to it. And, and I think you've got to play a little bit of that part as well. And, and I think Julio does it as good as anyone. And, and he's probably the best at it. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I think it's, it's just the responsibility of it all. He understands the responsibility of being a superstar because he's, he's grown up one, he's grown up in an age with social media Two, He's not afraid to be who he is. And mm. like I said, he loves the NBA and he watches it a ton. And, um, and so he understands kind of how they handle it. So I, I think, you know, and he has good people around him too, that, that help him understand it. Right. Yeah. They, they need him to start hitting some homers. I mean, that's pretty, 
important for them. He needs to hit some homers. Well, is he going to be able to hit homers at least uh, here on Friday? What, what are the odds this game actually takes place today? I don't know. Um, it's, gonna, it's supposed to start raining pretty hard about three, so that may saturate the field a little bit. I don't know what they're going to do in terms of – it's never – it's supposed to kind of – you know, rain off and on until 10 o'clock and then it's supposed to start snowing. So Jeez, I don't know. Tomorrow word. is, tomorrow is expected to be drier, but it's only supposed to be like high of 34, 35. So they could play a double header tomorrow in the cold if they cancel it tonight. But what they don't want, I, I, and honestly, they could play a double header on Sunday because they have an off day on Monday. So they can make that work too. You look at this baseball. I'm just looking at the Rockies right now. I just pulled up their stats. This is just a this is a who's who of just craptastic, man. I mean, it is mm-hmm. just. I mean, nobody. I mean, these, these are not household names at all. I mean, obviously the you know the Chris Bryant thing, and he's struggling again. That hasn't been a good signing. I know you know. I don't know many who of us. likes baseball. I don't know who likes baseball less, Chris Bryant or Anthony Rendon. That is a toss up. Well, I mean, Brian, you know, it is a thing, you know, it, it's, it's money and greed and all this kind of stuff. And and m- most of us would always take the money when offered ridiculous amounts. It is at times though, you have to balance the fit, the money and you know, what do you want out of it? Like, what, what do you want out of your career? Is it about how much money can I get? Is it about winning championships? Is it about being on competitive teams? I mean, he made a decision that was I mean, you look, it was just simply financial. That, that's all it was. There's nothing more. Financial, financial and location. He already won a championship too. So it's like, he won an MVP, won a championship. It's like, I'm done. Yeah. It's, it's the thing with, with, I remember when everybody thought the Mariners should sign Bryant. And there's this whole conspiracy theory that, that one of the reasons that the Mariners never really got a second interview with Marcus Simeon is because that Boris wanted, Boris wanted, Simeon to go to Texas, take the 210 million and that he wanted, that would force the Mariners into taking Bryant. Um, I don't know that I believe that. I, the, I don't think the Mariners would have given him seven years, 210 million or whatever he got or 240 million. I just don't see that. And cause Simeon was never going to sign another contract. That was his thing. I'm signing one more contract. I'm never going to do what these other guys are doing when you're here, when you're there, I'm signing one deal and I'm done. Um, and, and I don't know that the Mariners would have done that. They tried, you know, they loved him. They wanted him. Um, so like, I guess with Bryant, and it never really got very far, but Bryant kind of let the Mariners know he wasn't interested in playing third base. He wasn't really interested in playing left field. He only wanted to play first base in DH. And, you know, he only, and he didn't really want to play in the field very much. And you're just like, wait, we're going to give you how much, you know, that's, uh. I mean, like, and, 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 and what, what the hell are the Rockies thinking? You're terrible. So why would you spend all those that money on a guy that everybody questions whether he wanted to play baseball that much or not? Like they don't, you know, you can you can complain about the Mariners' ownership, and you should rightfully so. But this guy has money, and he doesn't know how to do anything. He doesn't know how to hire the right people. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, they they fell into Arenado and a couple guys, and they had that little run. But since then. They don't draft and develop anybody. They're considered one of the worst teams in terms of embracing analytics and developing players in that way and finding players. Their scouting's bad. Everything. It's it's total nightmare. And this city embraces sports. And you know as well as I do, Coors Field right. on a Friday night in June is the greatest place to be because unlike Seattle, they – embrace the downtown area and there's bars and restaurants that hang stay open it's the place to go it's your pre-funk yeah for every for every college kid and person up to about 50 it's the pre-funk place they go there they buy a five dollar rock pile ticket they go out to the elevated deck in Coors field and play cornhole and barely watch the game but it's packed you know and and they have just kind of pissed it all away you know, they were starting to make some ground and then look what the nuggets have done. Well, it'll, they, all, it'll always be a Bronco city. And they just have kind of pissed it all away they're on such the back burner of the, of the sports landscape there too. I mean, it's, it's Bron- I mean, this is what it's Broncos, Broncos, Broncos. Okay. And then it's, and then it's probably, 
I probably goes back and forth between the Nuggets and the Avs. I mean, it's a for people. I'm sure people know this, but it is a massive hockey culture there, and it's just not because yeah. of the Avalanche. It's because DU, which just won the yeah. the uh, the a championship again, Frozen Four. Yeah, they're awesome, and so it's a huge community for hockey. So it, that kind of flip flops a little bit, and then it's like, I mean, the Rockies are so far down uh, the list, and you're right, they just never. That's kind of. You know, the, which is scary with what the Mariners are kind of going through, like what happened a couple of years ago. It's like the Rockies never jumped on that and continued, which they did have good teams and, you know, they got to a World Series, but they never struck, right? They never kept the consistency. Uh, it's un, it's unfortunate because everything that you describe, it, it's a fabulous city. Uh, it's a great sport. I mean, it's a great sports town. I mean, unbelievable sports town. One of those sports towns that when, you know, the – the the local news will come on and it it will be 30 minutes on the sports if it's some mm-hmm. if the abs are doing something the nuggets the broncos i mean that's all it is and then they'll be like yeah and then there's a a bus fire uh down on fifth street okay yeah. that wraps it up for tonight you know i mean it's yeah, it's, it's, it's huge it's, it, it, the rockies they just they they have they have no direction they seem very rudderless and, and like i heard their owner kind of complain about being the dodgers being in their division but the Diamondbacks made it work by being smart. Yeah. You know, it can be done. Yeah. You're not going to spend like the Padres. That's fine. You can be smarter and find ways to do it. But like, when is the last great hitter they've developed? You count Charlie Blackman. He, he was a late blooming hitter. Then they gave him like 250 million. Now they're rolling out that corpse of a body every day in right field. Like that's so stupid. He always reminds me of the guy that's on uh, like the internet, the liver King. Oh Yeah. Every time I think of the Primals. Liver, I think the of Primals. Liver King, I think of Charlie Blackman. What uh, Hancock goes on Friday if they do play. Castillo will go on Saturday. Still looking for his first win here. Zero and four, the five eight two ERA looked better in the in that last start. But what is it that what what are some of the other things? The next step he needs to take here on the mound to get back to his form that he was last year and the in the last few years since coming over from uh, Cincinnati in that trade. I just think. You know, miss off the plate. He misses on the plate too much. It's harness your harness the stuff. Figure out where it's moving earlier, how it's moving, and and then adjust what you're supposed to do. Whether it's moving on the rubber, and that's what they've tried a little bit, adjusting where he stands, because everything's leaking back onto the plate, and then he gets hit. And hitters are more likely to swing with two strikes than any other count. So if you're missing on the plate, you're helping them out. You know, more hitters swing. The highest percentage of swings come with two strikes, and you're missing on the plate. That's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it takes the advantage of having two strikes away. So he's just got to learn. It's the He always sits there and says the baseball talks to him. Well, when it's talking to you, talk back and say, hey, go this way. Go down more. Go up more. <laughs> Miss more. Like, who cares if you – the mm. thing is, is, is hitters – Hitters will get themselves out if you miss, if if they're competitive misses. And even if you have some non-competitive misses to force yourself to get out of the strike zone, the muscle memory says that'll help you a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's his biggest problem. Well, we'll see if they can get the uh, the series underway in uh, Colorado. Three-game series there with the Rockies starts on Friday, and uh, hopefully we'll conclude there on a Sunday. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Enjoy your luxurious hotel suite there in Denver, Colorado. Get the room service Throw it all on Barrett and Seattle Times and run it up, my friend. Run it <laughs> I'm, up. I'm looking for I'm looking for uh they have that Sam's number seven or whatever with the breakfast burritos and the green chili sauce on top. So oh, let me have El that Noah Noah. El Noah Noah. Yeah, I heard that you, place okay. too. Yeah. And then you've been yeah. to the cricket? Yes. Okay, there you go. El Noah Noah. That's where you want to go. All right, you're the best. Yeah. Ryan Davis, Chalet Bowl, ChaletBowl.com, Washington's oldest operating bowling alley established in 1941 located in uh, Tacoma's Proctor District. Family owned and operated for 40 years. The Frederick families and staff specialize in customer service for your bowling, food, and fun experience while at our unique 12-lane facility. Go to ChaletBowl.com to make your reservations. We'll talk next week. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me. All right, there he is, Ryan Devish, joining us. Boy, he signed off real quick, didn't he? All right, we will talk to you soon. Also, uh, coming up on the Friday edition of the radio program, where all our guests drop at 1 o'clock. Puck drop, uh, puck drop uh, goes at 10, our daily puck drop, and then all the guests at 1 o'clock, uh, including Devish, who we just wrapped up. Also, 
uh, Chris Egan from King 5. So enjoy all of it on a Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk to you next week. As always, we promise to be better. No shirts, no shoes, no dice. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>